Hello to all our Carey kids. Well, today we are continuing our story in the book of Ruth, a beautiful book of loyalty and love. If you want to hear how the story began, why not look back at last week's video from Graham, if you didn't get to see it. Now, when two people get married, they have to make it legal in the sight of others, witnesses. Here's a picture of a just married young couple doing what is called signing the register. It's a written agreement that states that they are now legally married. In Old Testament times, people had other ways of showing agreements, as we are going to see as we continue the story of Ruth from chapters 3 and 4. Naomi and her daughter Ruth, now on her own without husband or sons, were running out of food because the harvest was over and there was no corn left to pick up. How were they going to survive? Who was going to look after them and help provide for them? Naomi trusted God and she knew what God's law said. It said that if a husband died and his wife was left alone, then a man who was a close relative could buy back any land from the man who had died and also had permission to marry the woman. That close relative was a man named Boaz. Naomi and Ruth had some land which belonged to Naomi's husband, Elimelech. Naomi had told Ruth to go to Boaz when he'd finished his work in the fields and ask him, as a close relative, to buy the land and marry her. Whoa, not the easiest thing to do, I imagine. But she loved her mother and was prepared to do whatever it took to provide for her needs. Well, as we looked at last week, Ruth arrived at the field belonging to Boaz and picked up any leftover grain from his farmers. And Boaz noticed her and he treated her with great kindness. Well, that was a good start, wasn't it? <laughs> After Boaz had finished his work in the fields, and, as was customary in those days, slept beside his pile of grain to keep it safe, Ruth quietly waited at his feet until he woke up. I doubt that she slept at all that night, probably feeling very nervous as to what might happen when Boaz woke up. But, to her surprise, Boaz was pleased to see her, as he had great respect for her. Well, Ruth must have given her an inward sigh of relief as they spoke together about the situation. Boaz felt for Ruth and was very happy to buy the land and marry her. Well, hey, great news. But there was a problem. Boaz was aware of another relation who was closer than he was to keep this law. So he would have to go to speak to him first. Oh dear. It was all going so well. But now all Ruth could do was go home to Naomi and wait to find out what would happen. Well, the next day, Boaz went to a place called the Gate of Bethlehem. This was a special place where discussions were made and important things were agreed. Ten 
important people came to witness what was happening. Boaz explained the situation in detail to the other man who was the close relative. Wonderfully, the man was happy to hand over the rights for Boaz to buy the land and marry Ruth. Now to make this legal, they did something rather unusual. It was customary for one of the people involved in the agreement to take off their sandal and hand it over to the other person with other people watching. And that's exactly what this man did. He took off his sandal, handed it to Boaz, and that made the agreement official. Boaz would buy the land and then marry Ruth. Hurrah, hurrah! Both Ruth and Naomi had seen God's love and care and protection fulfilled to the word. Interestingly, some time later, Ruth had a baby boy called Obed. Ruth was so happy and so was her mother, Naomi, who could help look after the baby. Boaz, Ruth, Naomi and Obed have become part of a very important family, which we read about later in the Bible. You see, Obed was to have a grandson and his name was David, King David. Many years later this same family was to be part of another even more important family. Can you guess which family this might be? Yes, the family of Jesus. Did you know God loves to work in and through families so they can help and care for each other. Let's remember to thank God for our own families and do all we can to help each member because it pleases God and he is able to use families to witness for him in the world around us. Even more important than that though is that you are a member of God's family and the only way to do that is by trusting Jesus, saying sorry for all the wrong things you've done and receiving his free gift of salvation. Well, that's the end of our session. Thanks for listening and I hope to see you all soon.